स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया last week we defined the notion of complex differentiability we saw that complex differentiable functions also satisfy the laws of calculus namely linearity the product rule quotient rule and also the chain rule thereafter we saw a few examples of uh, complex differentiable function and in particular we noted that polynomials in the variable z are complex differentiable in the entire complex plane they are entire functions this week we begin by discussing the notion of power series power series is an infinite uh, degree variant of uh, a polynomial inside its disk of convergence a power series behaves very similar to polynomial both analytically and algebraically let's start this lecture by defining uh, a power series around a point z not in the complex plane power series let z not be a point in the complex plane uh, a formal power series around z not with complex coefficients is an expression of is a formal expression summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n where the sum is from 0 to infinity where a n are complex numbers. and z is an indeterminate so this is a formal power series uh, the z featuring in the expression of the formal power series is an indeterminate we could ask about the convergence of this power series for a complex number z for z in c we could ask whether the series of the complex numbers say summation a and z minus z0 to the power n converges or not so uh, we could ask whether a formal power series converges at a given uh, complex number given point z in c so for example at the point z not the uh, power series around z not so this is yeah power series around z not i have written it so a power series around z not will always converge at the point z not absolutely at z not the formal power series converges absolutely. The formal power series given by summation a n z minus z not to the power n converges absolutely. Another example would be to consider the geometric series summation z to the power n. So if I don't write the limits it's understood that it is from 0 to infinity so if you consider the geometric power series z to the power n then for mod z greater than or equal to 1 take any point uh, z which satisfies mod z greater than or equal to 1 the summons mod z to the power n 
mod z to the power n is just mod z to the power n is greater than 1 and does not converge to 0. But if the series of complex numbers summation z to the power n should converge, it's supposed that the summons converge to 0, right? And because the summons here don't converge to 0, this series does not converge. Hence, summation z to the power n does not converge or diverges. So, it's a question of interest to uh, check at what point a given formal power series converges and at what points the formal power series does not converge. The question is answered by studying what is called as the radius of convergence of radius of convergence of the given power series. So, let me just define that radius of convergence. This is given a power series, we can talk about the radius of convergence. Let summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n be a formal power series around z naught. We define the radius of convergence R of the formal power series to be the number in zero infinity with both zero and infinity included where the number is given by R is the lim in as n goes to infinity of mod a n to the power minus 1 by n. So, this is exactly how you would have defined a radius of convergence in a course in real analysis when you study real analytic functions. So, this is the lim inf as n goes to infinity of the uh, minus of 1 by nth root or 1 by 1 by nth root of mod a n. The radius of convergence as the name suggests is a quantity which tells us something about the convergence of the given formal power series which is captured in the next uh, proposition which I will be writing. If you notice the definition of uh, radius of convergence implies that uh, R in some sense captures how the coefficients of our given formal power series decays. How past and at to what uh, number the coefficients decay. The proposition which I will be writing now tells us that if we are in a disk of radius r around uh, z naught, the formal power series converges absolutely in that disk. And if we are in the complement of the closed disk of radius r, the series diverges in that region. Let me note that. Let summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n be a power series around z naught. Then for z in d z 0 r, okay. Let R be the radius of convergence. Let R be the radius of convergence of the formal series of the power series. Then for Z in D Z zero R the series summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n converges absolutely. What is that here the z that is p 
featuring in this power series is the complex number z in the z0 r. In this case, it was an indeterminate, so the distinction has started coming in. The proposition, the first part of the proposition says that in this disk of uh, radius r around z0, this is called the disk of convergence. Uh, the formal power series, when evaluated at z, converges absolutely. The series of complex numbers converges absolutely. For r less than capital R, the series converges uniformly, you can say more, it converges uniformly on the z0 smaller. Furthermore, that's not the only thing, we only talked about where it converges. If absolute value of z minus z0 is greater than capital R, then summation a n z minus z naught to the power n diverges. So outside the closed disk of radius r, the formal power series when evaluated at any point z, it diverges. So the disk, so let me just note that the disk d z0 r is called the disk of convergence of the formal power series. Let's give a proof of this proposition. Okay, let me go over the statement of the proposition once more. If we are in the disk of convergence dz0r, the power series summation an z minus z0 to the power n converges absolutely. And in a smaller disk, it converges uniformly. Outside the disk of radius r, the, the series diverges. Let's give a proof. Let's give a proof of what happens when mod of z minus z0 is greater than r let mod of z be a point in C such that mod of z minus z0 is greater than capital R. Now the fact that mod of z minus z0 is greater than capital R and the fact that R is the lim inf of mod a n to the power minus 1 by n tells us that there exist infinitely many natural numbers n such that mod a n to the power minus of 1 by n is less than mod z minus z0. Let's see what happens if that is not the case. If there doesn't exist infinitely many n such that mod a n to the power minus 1 by n is less than mod z minus z0, then after a point, mod a n to the power minus 1 by n would be greater than or equal to mod z minus z0. And that would imply that the limit would be greater than or equal to mod z minus z0. But the limit we know is equal to r, which is strictly less than mod z minus z0. Hence, that cannot happen. So, there should necessarily exist infinitely many such natural numbers and such that mod a n to the power minus 1 by n is less than z minus z0, mod of z minus z0. Okay, this implies the fact that there are such uh, natural numbers implies that mod a n to the power 1 by n, remember that these are all positive numbers, so I am freely multiplying to get the inequality mod a n to the power 1 by n z minus z 0 to the power n, uh, z minus z 0 is less than, uh, sorry, is greater than 1 for infinitely many. natural numbers. But then taking power, this implies that mod of a n times z minus z0 to the power n is greater than 1 for infinitely many values n. But what can we say about a series which converges? We know that the summons of the series should converge to 0 if the series is to converge. But we have seen here that there is a, a sequence of uh, summons which constantly have absolute value greater than 1. Hence, this series cannot converge. 
since the summons does not converge to 0. Let me call this star to 0 by star. We have we conclude that summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n does not converge. So, that was quite straightforward. If mod z minus z 0 is greater than capital R, the series does not converge. Let us next explore what happens when z belongs to the discovery radius capital R around z minus. Let z be in b z 0 capital R. This implies that mod of z minus z 0 is less than say some small r which is less than capital R for some r greater than 0. But again let us invoke the fact that capital R is the limit. Since capital R is the limb in of mod a n to the power minus 1 by n, there exists some natural number n such that for all n greater than capital N mod a n to the power minus 1 by n is greater than r. Let us see why that is the case. If there is no such n, we would have had an infinite, uh, infinitely many uh, n such that mod a n to the power minus of 1 by n is less than or equal to small r. But that would imply that the limb inf is now less than or equal to small r as well. But we know that the limb inf is equal to r and that small r is strictly less than capital R. And hence this should, that, that, that would be a contradiction, <laughs> hence this should necessarily happen. Right, so what is the implication of this? This is for uh, for all n greater than this capital N. Okay, that implies that mod a n r to the power n. Remember that these are all positive numbers. I am freely manipulating the uh, inequality here to conclude that this is less than 1 for all n greater than capital N. All right, now let us assume, uh, let us analyze the scale of our given power series. So, uh, look at for n greater than capital N, what is n times z minus z 0 to the power n going to be here? This is exactly equal to a n into r to the power n times mod of z minus z 0 to the power n by r to the power n. And we just checked that for n greater than capital N mod a n times r to the power n is less than. So, this is less than or equal to mod of z minus z 0 by r to the power capital N. What is that mod of z minus z0 is less than r and therefore mod of z minus z0 by r is a number which is less than 1. And therefore, the scale summation mod a n z minus z0 to the power n where n is greater than capital N is less than or equal to the sum of mod of z minus z0 by r to the power n, which is a geometric series and which we know converges. And therefore, for any z, the absolute, uh, the sequence of absolute n, summation a n before capital N, there are only finitely many terms and hence this series. converges. That is precisely the definition of a series being absolutely convergent i e 
summation a n z minus z zero to the power n converges absolutely. In this proof, we have already uh, laid the framework to prove that in a smaller disk, the the series converges uniformly. So let's do that. So let R be less than capital R and R1 be such that R is less than R1 is less than capital R. We'll use the same trick now. For there exists some n in natural numbers such that for all n greater than capital N, mod a n to the power minus of 1 by n is strictly greater than R1. Yeah, R1. Instead of smaller, let's now uh, use this. Which in particular is also greater than smaller. So if you now consider mod of uh, a n into z minus z 0 to the power n, this is equal to um, mod of a n r 1 to the power n times mod of z minus z 0 by r 1 to the power n. No, this has an n here as well. But then we just know that for n greater than capital 1 and z in d z0 small r is what we are interested in. And because d z is in d z0 r, absolute value of z minus z0 is bounded by small r. So this is less than or equal to this term is bounded by 1 and the other term is bounded by r by r1 to the power n. Now, since, since summation r by r1 to the power n, n from 0 to infinity is a geometric series which converges, uh, is a convergent series because it's a geometric series. Given a epsilon positive pair excess capital N such that capital N0 which is greater than capital N such that summation N greater than or equal to N0 of R by R1 to the power N is less than epsilon. So then, then what do we have? Then the absolute value of summation a n z minus z 0 to the power n, this series which we now know converges in d z 0 r, this minus summation n is equal to 0 to the partial sum of a n z minus z 0 to the power n, this is precisely equal to the absolute value of n greater than or equal to maybe n strictly greater than n a n z minus z 0 to the power n which is less than summation absolute value of the absolute value can be taken inside and we will write this as less than r by r 1 to the power n where n is greater than or equal to n minus they are all positive numbers which is less than epsilon and this does not depend on the point z so the, the series converges uniformly on d z 0 small r and that completes the proof of the proposition. So the radius of convergence tells us exactly how the power series converges and diverges in the disk of radius r it converges and outside the closed disk of radius r it diverges. But many times it is quite complicated to compute the radius of convergence explicitly due to the way it is defined and uh, there are there is the ratio test which can be used to approximate our uh, radius of convergence let me write that down in the next proposition let summation a n z minus z naught to the power n be a formal power
with radius of convergence r. Further, let us assume that a n is not 0 or n sufficiently large. Then the ratio test tells us that the lim int n going to infinity of mod a n by mod a n plus 1, this is less than or equal to r, which is our radius of convergence, which is less than or equal to the lim sub mod a n by mod a n plus 1. In particular, if the sequence of numbers mod a n by mod a n plus 1 converges, then the limit and the limbs of both are equal and that would be equal to the radius of convergence. So, that will be the ratio test. Let us give a proof of this statement. Let r1 be equal to the limb in. The strategy we will uh, adopt to prove this proposition would be that small r is less than capital R1, we will prove that small r is less than or equal to capital R. And that way it would force capital R1 to be less than or equal to capital R. Let us do that. Let r be less than capital R1. Then by the very definition of lim int, then there exists a capital N in natural numbers such that for all n greater than capital N mod of a n by mod of a n plus 1 is strictly greater than r. Notice that this is forced because if there does not exist one such capital N then there will be infinitely many values of n such that mod a n by mod a n plus 1 would be less than equal to r and that would imply that the lim inf is less than or equal to small r. But then we know that it is equal to capital R 1 which is a strictly greater quantity than small r and hence that cannot happen. The we would arrive at a contradiction in that case and therefore there exists such an n where for all n greater than capital N mod a n by mod a n plus 1 is greater than capital R. Let us see now what happens for uh, z in d z 0 r. We will show that the sequence is uh, for, for z in d z 0 small r, the form the power series necessarily converges. To do that, let us consider mod a n z minus z 0 to the power n, where n is greater than capital N, this capital N here above. Suppose we have z in d z 0 r, this would mean or rather let us consider a n plus 1 and see what happens a n plus 1 z minus z 0 to the power n plus 1 this is less than or equal to mod of a n plus 1 times r to the power n plus 1 times z minus z 0 to the power n plus 1 or let me, let me keep it in this way by r to the power n plus 1. This is precisely the meaning of, uh, in fact I have not done anything, so this is actually equal to the same number. The inequality will come from here next. This actually tells us that mod a n plus 1 times r is less than mod a n. And this tells us that this is uh, less than mod a n times r to the power n into mod of z minus z 0 to the power z, z minus z 0 by r to the power n. And by an induction argument, uh, we can conclude that this 
is less than mod of t capital n r to the power capital n times absolute value of z minus z0 by r to the power capital n plus 1. Therefore, we have bounded for n greater than capital N all mod an plus 1 times z minus z0 to the power n plus 1. Hence, we tail z minus z0 to the power n where n is greater than or equal to capital N, the absolute, the absolute value of this is less than or equal to the sum, maybe you can put the mod a capital N r to the power n outside and write this as mod z minus z0 by r to the power n and n is greater than or equal to capital N. What is that mod z minus z0? by r is less than 1 and this is the tail of the uh, geometric series which converges and therefore we have that this sequence converges. Converges. In fact we have shown that it converges absolutely. But what does that mean? That means that this means that d z0 r is contained in d contained in the set of all z such that mod z minus z0 is less than or equal to capital R because if you go outside the closed disk of radius r we know that the series diverges for sure so this is certainly the case and that implies that r is less than or equal to capital R. But that's precisely what we wanted. We have shown now that for every r less than r1, r is less than or equal to capital R. Since this is true for all r less than capital R1, we have r1 is less than or equal to capital R. And that's precisely what we had started. This is the inequality that we have just proved. Okay, now let's focus on this inequality. The proof is quite similar. The techniques are, the idea is the same. Let's very quickly look at it. Instead of uh, the convergence, we will now show divergence of this. Let R2 be the limb soup as n goes to infinity of mod a n to the power, sorry, mod a n by mod a n plus 1. We will take some r greater than r2 and let's see what happens uh, for mod z minus z0 greater than r2. And let z in c be such that mod z minus z0 is greater than r. Now, the fact that r is greater than r2, since r is greater than r2, there exists some n. Now, this n is not dependent on the n taken earlier. This is a new natural number n, such that for all n greater than capital N, the The ratio a mod an by mod an plus 1 is less than small r because if this is if there does not exist one such capital n then we would have infinitely many values same argument where mod an by mod an plus 1 would be greater than or equal to r and therefore the limb sub would be greater than or equal to small r that would be a contradiction so this should happen there exists one such a capital n and this by rewriting just tells us that mod a n plus 1 times r is greater than mod a n. But then we are done now because our setup is for all those points z such that mod z minus z0 is greater than r. Then what happens is we look at a for n greater than capital N mod a n plus 1 z minus z 0 to the power n plus 1 this is uh, greater than 
mod of a n plus 1 times r to the power n plus 1 which is greater than mod of a n r to the power n and so on which is greater than mod of a capital N r to the power capital N. And that means that the this is the tail right the tail is always greater than some constant m it does not converge to 0 since the summons do not converge to 0. The series does not converge. Summation a n z minus z naught to the power n does not converge. And what was the z that we picked? The z was that, that means the set of all z such that mod z minus z0 is greater than r, oh sorry, greater than small r. This is contained in the set of all z such that mod of z minus z0 is greater than capital R or rather greater than equal to capital R. This just tells us that d z0 r is contained in the set of all z such that mod z minus z0 is less than or equal to small r. I could have just directly written that r is less than or equal to small r and this is true for all r greater than capital This is true for all r greater than r1. This implies that r is less than or equal to r1, and hence we have proved it. And hence we have completed the proof of the ratio test. So the ratio test gives us a very handy way to uh, compute the radius of convergence at times. So, for example, let us look at a few examples now. Let us look at the uh, example we are familiar with e to the power z be equal to summation z to the power n by n factorial. Here a n is 1 by n factorial and uh, if you look at mod a n by mod a n plus 1 for every n natural number this is equal to 1 by n factorial by 1 by n plus 1 factorial let me write it down as n plus 1 factorial by n factorial which is equal to n plus 1. So if you look at the lim sup and the lim n both turn out to be infinite hence the radius of convergence is infinite. The exponential it converges on the entire complex plane. What about uh, the, the function, Some, what about the power series summation n factorial times z to the power n. So notice that both are, both these examples are power series around the origin. We are now looking at n factorial times z to the power n check that mod a n by mod a n plus 1 this is just going to be equal to 1 by n plus 1 which converges to 0 as n goes to infinite n goes to infinity and that means that the series does not converge outside the point 0 hence the series converges only at the origin. Let us now look at the familiar example of the geometric series. Ge geometric series is a power series around 0 and it has radius of convergence 1. So notice that uh, the points for z mod z equal to 1 the series diverges.
So you take any point on the boundary of the disk of uh, the uh, boundary of the disk of convergence, the power series here diverges. But let's play around with the geometric series a bit more. For any point in the disk of uh, radius one around zero, which is the disk of convergence, we can say that z times summation z to the power n is equal to summation. This is let me now be careful with the indices. This is just going to be equal to z to the power n plus one. By rewriting, this is equal to summation n is equal to one to infinity z to the power n. Let me just write this as by adding 1 and uh, subtracting it. This is going to be again the same power series minus 1. And by doing the usual algebra on D01, we have summation z to the power n is equal to 1 by 1 minus z. That's quite remarkable because 1 by 1 minus z is a rational function, which we have already seen is a complex differentiable function on c minus 1, isn't it? On c minus the 0 of the or the root of the denominator. Denominator is the polynomial 1 minus z, whose root is exactly at 1. On c minus 1, the function 1 by 1 minus z is holomorphic, in fact. We have already seen that. But then the geometric power series summation z to the power n does not extend past the unit disk. So it's important to note that it can happen that on the disk of convergence a power series converges to a function which may well extend beyond the disk of convergence. So hence uh, 1 by 1 minus z is a function which extends beyond d01 which is the disk of convergence of summation z to the power n. So even though this power series is restricted and lives within the unit disk 1 by 1 minus z and it, it converges to a function 1 by 1 minus z. But 1 minus 1 minus z can very well have its existence outside the unit disk. That's something which should be kept in mind. We will return to this later. We saw this example where, however, uh, the power series summation z to the power n does not converge at any point on the boundary. If we tweak the power series a bit, if you look at summation z to the power n by n square, this is uh, a power series which also has radius of convergence 1. Now you can check that at the point mod z is equal to 1, the series converges now. So the boundary of the disk of convergence is a subtle place. It can happen that the series converges there. It can also happen that the series does not converge, like we saw in the case of the geometric series summation z to the power. But what can be said for sure is that if there is one point where uh, the given power series does converge, then the behavior as we approach the boundary point will be nice. And that is the content of what is called as the Abel's theorem. Let me write down the statement and prove the uh, theorem step by step. Let f of z, let's give the power series a name, f of z, a n z minus z 0 to the power n. This be a power series which converges, okay with a positive radius of convergence. So let me elaborate on that. When I say positive radius of convergence, R, 
means that r is neither zero nor infinite it is a positive number and suppose z1 is equal to z0 plus r e to the power i theta notice that this is on the boundary of the disk of radius of convergence let this be a point such that f of z1 converges i'm just telling a convergence here we are not talking anything about absolute convergence suppose this converges then the conclusion of abel's theorem tells us that limit as r goes to r minus through inside the disk of radius of convergence that's what the uh, implication here is r is going to r minus from values r smaller less than capital r of f of z0 plus r e to the power i theta this is exactly equal to f of z1 so the behavior is controlled in some sense and that is the content of abel's theorem we will prove this theorem step by step and uh, the proof is by reducing the problem to a simpler case at every stage so the first assumption is that we may assume that f of z1 is equal to 0 this assumption can be uh, forced why is this the case let's define to to justify this define uh, g of z to be equal to f of z minus f of z1 remember that f of z1 is a complex number and this is just going to be equal to summation k n z minus let me call it d n z minus z naught to the power n where d n is equal to a n for all n greater than 0 and d 0 is equal to a 0 minus f of z 1. Notice that g of z has the same radius of convergence. Uh, this b, g of z is also a power series around z naught and it has the same radius of convergence as f and moreover if we manage to prove the result for g if we manage to prove Abel's lemma for uh, g if limit r going to r minus g of z0 plus r e to the power i theta is equal to g of z0 plus capital r e to the power i theta which now in this case is equal to 0 if this is true then limit r going to r minus of what is g of z plus r e to the power i theta that is just f of z plus r e to the power i theta minus f of z1 is equal to 0 which would imply that the limit as r goes to r minus of f of z plus r e to the power i theta is f of z so if we prove uh, the result with the extra assumption that f of z1 is equal to 0 then we are still good we have indeed proved it in the general setting so we may from now hence we will be assuming or hence we shall assume that f of z1 is equal to 0. Let's do some further reductions. We will next assume that we will show that we can assume z0 to be itself equal to 0. We can also assume z0 to be equal to 0. To do that, uh, define g of z to be equal to the exact series, but now not around z0, but rather around 0. Summation a n z to the power n, where n is now from 0 to infinity. So if g of r e to the power i theta x is and is equal to 0 and suppose limit this is what we want to show right if this is known for such functions g r e to the power i theta is equal to uh, 0 then let's see whether we can conclude something similar 
about f then g of r e to the power i theta you should check this is exactly equal to f of z0 plus r e to the power i theta and the limit as r goes to r minus of this is the same as the limit as r goes to r minus and we will be able to conclude that this is equal to 0 because f of z0 plus capital r e to the power i theta and we know that this is equal to 0. So if we indeed prove it for power series around 0, we can translate it and say that this is true for every power series around an arbitrary point. The last final reduction which uh, we will be doing is to assume that, so hence uh, we shall assume that zero is, z0 is 0 is 0. We may also assume, let's reduce it to as simple a case as we can deal with. We may also assume that z0, uh, not z0, z0 is already 0, r is equal to 1 and theta is equal to 0. Let's reduce it to this case in one go. To do that, Let g of z be equal to summation a n r to the power n e to the power minus i n theta z to the power n. If you notice carefully, this is nothing but f of r to the power f of r e to the power minus i n theta times z. If you look at the uh, radius of convergence of G, the radius of convergence of G is equal to 1. That is something which you should sit down and check because, okay, is equal to the lim in n going to infinity mod a n to the power minus 1 by n r n to the power minus 1 by n which is r to the power minus n by n. Remember r is a positive number and absolute value of e to the power minus, minus i n theta is 1. So this is just going to be equal to 1 by r times the lim in n going to infinity mod a n to the power minus 1 by n which is equal to 1. So this is a power series which uh, has a radius of convergence 1 and its disk of convergence is the unit disk. And suppose we have proved uh, the result for the case when you know theta is equal to uh, 0 and r is equal to 1. That would mean that if, so the statement would be now like this, if g of 1 is equal to 0 and limit r going to 1 minus g of r is equal to 0, then uh, limit r going to r minus f of r e to the power i theta is equal to 0. So you should just check that this is exactly the same. And because of all these reductions, we have finally reduced proving the Abel's lemma to the following statement. So enough to show n. To prove the theorem, it is enough to prove the following. Let summation a n be a series converging to 0. Then summation a n r to the power limit r going to 1 minus a n r to the power n is equal to 0. This is the statement which we now have to prove. If we prove this statement because of all the reductions, we can see that Abel's lemma has been proved. Let's now 
try to prove this statement. Careful, this is the the sum was missing. The sum a n r to the power n will be equal to zero. All right. So if you look at summation a n r to the power n. Okay. So even before we go uh, go about proving that, notice that summation a n is converging to zero. So let capital a uh, n be equal to a zero plus a one plus f two a n. The fact that summation a n converges to zero means that, given epsilon positive, there exists some capital n such that for all n greater than capital n, mod of a n is less than epsilon. That is what summation a n going to zero means. Now let's rewrite the partial sum. Let let us look at uh, zero to well, these need need not be the same n. So let me write it as n. A m r to the power m. Let's see how we can rewrite this. Right? So this is going to be equal to a zero is just capital A zero, and a one is a one minus a zero. Small a one is capital A one minus a zero. Capital A zero times r plus going on that way, we have finally. Capital A M minus capital A M minus one times R to the power M. And if we rewrite this, this is just going to be equal to summation A N R to the power N minus R to the power N plus one, where N is going from zero to M minus one plus A M. R to the power n. This is the expression we get for uh, summation a m. Oh yeah, it's not a m r to the power m that I was writing. It was summation a n r to the power n, where n is going from zero to m. That we were. So this is exactly what we will be getting. Let us now see what happens when we take the limit as m goes to infinity. The term a m r to the power m converges to zero because a m converges to zero. And hence, summation n is equal to zero to infinity a n r to the power n is equal to one minus r times summation n is equal to zero to infinity a n r to the power n. Of course, we have to now study what happens to the series on the right. We are yet to explore the convergence of this particular object for r less than one. So did we put the condition that r is less than one? Okay, we have still not put the condition r less than one. So for r less than one, uh, let's see what happens to the right hand side. Consider the r x um, and given uh, epsilon positive, let capital N be such that Yeah, maybe I should change this a bit and I'll write this as epsilon by 2 just so that I get epsilon at the end. So, the uh, given epsilon positive as above, let's see what happens to the right hand side. The right hand side will be 1 minus r times summation n is equal to 0 to capital N a n r to the power n plus the r x is. And then there is a 1 minus r into summation n is equal to capital N to infinity a capital N r to the, a n r to the power n. And we know that if you look at the absolute value of this, the absolute value of this is less than or equal to the absolute value of these terms 1 minus r which is a positive number times the absolute value of a n r to the power n where n is from 0 to infinity plus 1 minus r times uh, the absolute value goes n which is mod a n into r to the power n. We can certainly say this and we took capital N in such a manner that the term mod a n is less than epsilon by 
two. I just changed it to by two so that I'll be able to write that here. So this is less than or equal to one minus r times summation n is equal to zero to. I'm sorry, not infinity here. It will be capital N. Capital N a n r to the power n plus one minus r into. Let me put the epsilon by two here. What remains is a geometric series which we know converges to r to the power n by one minus r. For r less than one, we know this, and this precisely is equal to one minus r times. We have not addressed the first term yet. We will come to that in a minute. Plus epsilon by two. This cancels off, and remember that r is less than one, so this is in fact less than epsilon by two. So the second term is bounded for n large. The first term is what we are now concerned about. The function summation n is equal to zero to capital N a n r to the power n. This is a continuous function. is a continuous function on zero one, and hence there is an upper bound. There is a bound beyond which this will not go. Hence, there exists capital M such that. Summation n is equal to zero to capital N a n r to the power n is less than m for all r in zero one. Let us now pick r so close to one that one minus r is less than epsilon by two. So let r be such that one minus r this is now is less than epsilon by two m, and then let's see what happens to the first term. Then Summation n equal to zero to capital N one minus r times this. Yeah, maybe I should write it again. Then one minus r times the absolute value of summation a n r to the power n, where n is from zero to capital N. This is less than or equal to Epsilon by I mean I'll put a this is a strict left less than doesn't matter to epsilon by two m times m which is equal to epsilon by two. So for r very close to one, hence limit as r goes to one minus of summation a n r to the power n. This is going to be limit as r goes to one minus of Uh, one minus r times summation a n r to the power n. We just proved by breaking it into two pieces that for r sufficiently close to one, the sum is this. The thing inside the bracket is less than epsilon, and hence the limit is equal to zero. And that's precisely what we had set out to do. And with this, we complete the proof of Abel's theorem. So as noted, the power series behavior, the behavior of the power series on the boundary is a bit subtle, and Abel's theorem is uh, one step in the direction of understanding the boundary behavior of the power series. In the next lecture, uh, we will describe the analytic properties of the power series within its disk of convergence.